Hello, I'm Rupert Kohler. One of the new main features is the revised control console. This is now a double bearing supported arm with a revised ergonomics and a better drilling position to give you optimal sight of the borehole in vertical and 45 degree position. The arm is uh, double bearing supported and can easily support my weight. So uh, should give long service life. From this side, we have the hoist feed and rotation controls. These are uh, pilot hydraulics, along with the hold back and variable feed. You then have direct acting um, control of your water pump or your auxiliary function. Then this section, again, direct hydraulic acting, controls all your auxiliary functions from clamps to winch control to, in this case, the SPT hammer and uh, MOSFET casing jack. The uh, hydraulics on this rig are designed to use minimal electrical components so it can be fixed in the field by someone with good hydraulic knowledge. We have over this side the engine control module and here the isolation circuit for the different drilling modes. So we have drilling, tracking and rigging or uh, drill rig setup. And then we have standard console light there and a horn for alerting users of operation. As I said before, the arm is uh, double bearing supported. So while this is a heavy unit, it's actually quite simple to maneuver into the desired position. for best view of the borehole or getting into transit position. Next we come around in the first door. This is our rigging section here. This controls the stabilization jacks and the mass raising and dumping facility. We also have, worth pointing out, is our uh, two pressure filters. These cover um, the main pump and the auxiliary pump. There's, the rig is designed to be serviced quite simply with good access to all sort of servicing points and grease points. You can also see in here, we have our wireline winch on this model, which is a 400 meter high speed wireline for use with wireline coring equipment. We also have slightly higher up our main tooling winch, which is a two ton unit on this model. Next along, this is access to your main pump group. We have four pumps in total, one load sense and three gear pumps, providing independent function for each of the key features of the rig. And then we also have our main manifolds, which distribute hydraulic power, depending on the mode of operation the rig is in. We then have our main power pack here. This particular model is fitted with a Perkins 111 horsepower unit. This is for uh, rest of world, stage 3A. We also offer a tier four final engine package, which is a Kohler unit. This is suitable for North American use and European Union use. I'll look down now. We have uh, our rubber track units. These are twin speed tracking with 400 mil wide rubbers for better ground pressure. The rig is twin speed and in lower speed it's quite capable of doing a 360 degree turn within its own length. At the rear of the rig we have a coring pump on this particular model, though we do have other options such as larger mud pumps, hammer oilers and other um, ancillaries which mount to the rear of the chassis. Underneath we have the rear stabilising jacks. These actually fold up into the rear of the rig to make sure that if it is on uneven terrain, we have excellent off-road capability and there is nothing to get the rig hung up on. In the rear panel of the rig, this area houses most of your day-to-day -day start options. So we have our main battery isolator here, your radio remote or your pilot umbilical tracking module can hang up inside here. You also have your battery charger for your radio remote within this canopy, your main fuse, here we have our main fuel tank. This is a 90 litre unit. This is easily removable from the underside of the rig, but can also be accessed and cleaned through the top cover panel. We also have our hydraulic tank here with our low level sensor. This cuts the rig out should there be an issue and the rig loses hydraulic fluid. And then here we have our hydraulic oil cooler. This is a thermostatically controlled unit. Um, it fails to safe should there be a problem with the electronics but um, this is then ducted away from the driller through this cowling on the rear of the bodywork. 
There is also a handy light in the top of the canopy here, so when nighttime operation happens, you have your full area lit. The airflow from the cooler and exhaust both comes in this direction, trying to keep as much fumes and emissions away from the driller so they have a nice working environment. Moving along, this section here is our main hydraulic tank. There's an easy and accessible drain plug here. Within this section of the canopy, there is a return line filter. This is accessed through this easily removable panel. Should the filter become blocked, there is a hole here and the warning indicator pops up through the hole indicating you should change the uh, hydraulic filter. Here we have our bypass line for our service line. This is um, to go to your mud pink pit or uh, storage tank here. If we have a look here. This is hydraulically actuated through a ram. We then have our main service line manifold with our system pressure gauge for that and then we have a main load sense valve in this area. These are your external power takeoffs. Here we have our standard one. This particular rig is set up for a piston sampling system. So this is a lower flow, lower pressure output dedicated just for use with the piston sampler. We also have 12 volt power here for remote tripod mounted lights. At the front of the rig, we have the front independent stabilizing jacks. These can be adjusted on height depending on uh, the track selection or the uh, user's ground conditions. We also have around the front here the vertical mast lock position so when the mast is locked this bracket comes into there and you drop your winch in to lock your mast securely at 90 degrees. When you're drilling at other angles we have a stay bar system here which supports the mast at up from 45 degrees to 65 degrees. We have other kits for different angles should it be required. Here in this particular rig we're set up with a four ton pullback mast. This has 3.6 meters worth of travel. It also has an extended mast extension for use with three meter core barrels with uh, full length overshots. The mast itself has all the hosing and cage and an energy chain for better hose management. You also have lighting at the top which is an optional extra. The head setup itself, we have a four speed rotary head here. This is two mechanical speeds and two hydraulic speeds. This gives you a range from about 60 RPM with 4,000 Newton meters approximately to 750 RPM with about 400 Newton meters. This is on a three position side shift to allow you to auger down and then you can move your SPT hammer into place in a very quick operation. Moving down, we have an inch and a quarter water swivel and on this particular rig it is also fitted with a soft coupling. Below that we have twin clamps here. This particular rig is fitted with 50 mil closing to 220 mil opening clamps. These are double uh, acting with gear flow dividers on top and bottom section to ensure good centering with the uh, cylinders. And on the bottom we have a mast foot casing jack. This allows you to give up to eight tons worth of retraction force should uh, the main four tons pull back of the rig not be capable of uh, extracting your casing or drill tooling. We then have a safety gate system. This is set up with a rotation speed reduction on gate opening. So the head can be running at maximum speed, 750 RPM. The second you open the gate, this will drop, which uh, meets current CE standards. This rig is fitted with a hydraulically driven SPT hammer. This is a static hammer where the anvil extends out the bottom of the rig so you don't have to chase the drill string down with the head and the hammer can just remain stationary. This allows you to do very quick SPTs in between augering or a casing installation. For operator safety, the rig is equipped with three emergency stop buttons located on a drill panel and both sides of the rig body. This particular rig is set up with the radio remote tracking system. Very ruggedized, you have left and right tracking. High and low speed track. And you also have a virtual speed control to give much finer control when you're trying to go through tight areas.